Hey, if you used iMovie for a while and you've heard all these great things about how good Final Cut Pro 10 is and you're considering buying the $300 upgrade, then I'm here to help you make an informed decision. I'm going to tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly about upgrading, giving you 10 questions to ponder before you make up your mind. So why should you listen to me? Well, I've been a major contributor to the iMovie subreddit and the Facebook iMovie Tips and Tricks group for years, and I've seen lots of people run into issues with iMovie. I've made 109 YouTube videos for my channel, and about a third of those are uh, iMovie tutorials, and I've made all but the last few with iMovie, the last couple I made with Final Cut Pro. I recently took advantage of Apple's 90-day free trial of Final Cut Pro 10, and though I'm not an expert on it by any means, uh, I really know enough to form a few conclusions. So let me cut to the chase, and I'll spend the rest of this video explaining why I feel the way I do. Unless iMovie's limitations are causing you major headaches, um, stick with it. Don't be fooled into thinking that getting a better tool will make your videos uh, magically better. Uh, like Lance Armstrong said, it's not about the bike. And in this case, it's not about your nonlinear editor. Uh, I resisted upgrading for many years because I wanted to focus on making my, my content better, uh, not fancy video editing tricks. I didn't want to get distracted by the tool, but the lure of the free 90-day trial uh, kind of sucked me in to giving it a shot. So now, let's talk about um, who should upgrade and why or why not. First of all, if you're one of these people that makes a lot of multi-cam videos, uh, often more than two cameras or a separate soundtrack, then Final Cut Pro is really what you should consider. Uh, you can make multi-cam videos with iMovie. In fact, I've got a whole tutorial on how to do it. But I use a, a Zoom audio recorder, uh, this guy right here. In fact, uh, I'm recording this uh, video right now uh, on, this, uh, on this Zoom audio recorder. I'm doing this with a lapel mic. And I use this configuration for most of my live soundtracks. And the, the first wonderful thing I discovered with Final Cut Pro 10 was auto synchronization. Instead of manually aligning the soundtrack with the video, you know, doing the three claps and all that kind of crap, uh, adjusting for the frame rates, you know, 29.97 versus 30 frames per second, blah, blah, blah. You just, you just select the two tracks and click auto synchronize. Uh, and this probably saves me 15 minutes on every video that I make, which is not a lot but it's so easy that it encourages me to make better videos using my Zoom for, for audio more than I would uh, with iMovie. And of course, Final Cut Pro 10's support for merging uh, multi-camera clips is, is great, particularly if you exceed iMovie's limit of, uh, of two tracks, you know, A roll and B roll. The second consideration is uh, if you make lots of videos where you need more than two layers. Uh, in my recent YouTube video series on Plants of the Desert Southwest, I made a video with five picture-in-picture -picture tracks. Uh, it would have been possible, but very time-consuming to do this in iMovie. Third consideration. Uh, simple picture-in-picture -picture clips are a pain in Final Cut Pro 10. Yes, I said a pain in Final Cut Pro 10 iMovie makes picture-in-picture -in -picture incredibly easy with simple framing, fade in and out, fly-ins, side-by-sides, and for reasons I don't understand, picture-in-picture -picture frames in Final Cut Pro 10 don't scale properly with the inset, making them practically useless. Yes, you can buy a plugin to fix this, but who wants to spend 300 bucks on software only to find out you need to buy another plugin on top of that just to do what you did before in the free software? That's crazy. The fourth issue or question is do you do a lot of custom text or titles in your videos? The number one question I see in the iMovie forums is 
how do I create custom titles? This is trivial in Final Cut Pro 10 and simply not doable within the iMovie app itself. That said, you can harness all the power of Keynote to create static and animated custom titles for either app. Uh, problem with iMovie is that if that it uses up uh, one of your two overlay layers. So you can't do this and do picture in picture or other graphics. What about animated text? For most situations, it's far easier to do this in Keynote or Motion than using Final Cut Pro 10's keyframes. Uh, to be honest, I found that the built in Final Cut Pro 10 uh, animated 3D titles are pretty much all I've needed. To do a table, use Keynote uh, with either app because uh, tables really can't be done within either of them. And I, I do use them for some of my more documentary oriented videos. Issue number five. Do you need manual control over project resolution and frame rate? Oddly enough, one of my most popular iMovie tutorials is how to set the project resolution to 4K, 1080p, etc. It never ceases to amaze me how badly Apple screwed this up in iMovie trying to make it simple to use, unquote, unquote, unquote. Uh, you can do it in iMovie, but the documentation sucks and you don't know if you've been successful until you go to export or share your video. In Final Cut Pro 10, you simply set it in a dialog box and that's the way iMovie should work. Six, uh, Final Cut Pro needs beefier hardware. Um, with great power comes greater responsible hardware. Uh, I found that with Final Cut Pro 10, a 4K 27-inch uh, monitor uh, is really needed in order to be successful at it. And dual monitors are really best and well supported. So I use my MacBook Pro monitor and this external monitor uh, and then split screen. I split the screen with Final Cut Pro when I'm using it. Uh, this is very well supported in Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, iMovie is helped by the larger monitor. I actually bought the monitor back when I was exclusively using iMovie. Uh, but there's no dual support, so you can use the other, the other monitor for mail or whatever you need to do. Uh, also, you'll need bigger hard drives. Uh, I found that my Final Cut Pro 10 libraries uh, could easily hit 50 gigabytes for one project with all the proxy files and all that stuff. So uh, if you're going to make the transition, um, expect that you're going to need a little bit beefier hardware. There's an old rule in computer engineering that the, the easiest way to make things go faster is to burn up more storage or memory and Final Cut Pro 10 is no exception to that rule. Um, it, the reason it's, it's as fast as it is is that uh, it uses a tremendous amount of storage for all of its render files, proxy files, all that kind of good stuff. However, rendering seems much slower in Final Cut Pro 10 than iMovie, probably because the progress is so visible in Final Cut Pro 10. You got those little rows of, of dots that slowly disappear over the clips as they're rendered, uh, whereas with iMovie, it's just all kind of hidden from you. Seven, uh, and this one is really disappointing, Final Cut Pro 10 is no more stable than iMovie is. Uh, one of my major disappointments with Final Cut Pro 10 is that it, it's just not more stable than iMovie. In fact, it seems more buggy. I've, I've had to delete render files periodically to get rid of black clips and other glitches that I just didn't expect in professional level software. So Apple, get your, get your act together and make sure that Final Cut Pro 10 uh, does not glitch out on you. Issue number eight. How about the learning curve? So Final Cut Pro 10 is touted as being a natural upgrade to iMovie, but it's taken me months to get used to it. Many of the shortcut keys are different, and after all this time, I still can't get used to having the two different cursors. Um, I find myself constantly having to double click on clips to select them, uh, which I've never had to do in iMovie, so it just seems cumbersome from that perspective. Nine, how about upgrading a project from iMovie to Final Cut Pro 10? 
let's say I started out a project in iMovie and midway through I decided, no, I'm going to upgrade because of, uh, I really need this feature or that feature. Can you move your project from one to the other? Uh, you can, uh, but believe it or not, you do not import an iMovie project into Final Cut Pro 10. What you do is export or share the movie, the iMovie, to Final Cut Pro 10, and then it appears in the library list. Uh, this works pretty well. Uh, even the fancy titles uh, come over intact. I've used this uh, a couple times now, and uh, it does work pretty well. 10. Where do you want to manage your media? The video, the stills, and the audio. Do you want to do it inside the app or outside the app? So iMovie has minimal media organization tools. You pretty much have to use the Finder or the Photos app to organize and, and archive all your stuff. Uh, and this is where Final Cut Pro 10 really shines. As you, do, as you can do very sophisticated media management right inside the app. You can organize by keywords, smart collections, sorting, searching, uh, all this great stuff. On the other hand, if you do that, if you keep all of your media uh, inside Final Cut Pro 10, uh, you really have to organize your libraries properly uh, or you're going to be out of hard drive space in no time because it's just going to mushroom on you. So uh, that's a big consideration, media management. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful, please click like or subscribe down below uh, or leave me a comment. I love getting comments and I, I try to respond to all of them uh, with a personal response as quickly as humanly possible. Thanks again.